Greetings and salutations, all you beautiful individuals. Welcome back to League Unlock. Eric and Mark here with you beauties. And how dare the LCS wait like 30 minutes after we finished doing the video yesterday. They drop the format change. The LTA coming in for 2025. And uh, initially, listen, I know people are very upset about not just the kind of strange LTA title. I've never seen the be represented in an acronym for a team. But I think people are overreacting with the hatred and vitriol towards these changes a little too much. It's almost like going TNFL, the National Football <laughs> League, the <laughs> Americas for yeah. League of the Americas. A little wonky, and it only gets even wonkier when you dive into some of the details that have come through, especially the formats. We'll go into all of that. I think the important thing, the one thing that I want to say out of the gates that is going to be interesting and important to check on is last year, Mark Z, the canoe commissioner for the LCS, of course, knowing that, you know, there were going to be massive changes and probably big, you know, changes like the LTA coming down the line. They said, go for it. Make your changes. Go free for all. Do what you want. See how you can improve. Bring back engagement to the region massive success i'm going triple not even the double check mark i'm giving it the full triple green check mark on how things went last year and the and the improvements and the big one listening listening to the fans listening to the consumer base and providing the changes that you want to see or that you thought you might want to see to lead to the excitement for the league that's going to be my big point because i want to see again people are going to have very strong opinions about this one and there's nothing wrong with it but we got to make sure that we're checking in and seeing that these changes are being heard and being acted upon by our commissioner and by the whole league and let's face it now going into this new era it's going to be harder to work in two fan bases right to make sure that people from the what now was former cb lol and former lcs making both ends happy it's going to be a lot more tricky to navigate and to listen to fans and to implement oh you like best of three more we'll change it for summer it's going to be harder to just do that in the midst of a season but uh initially obviously like all the other ones we've been seeing it's three splits and split one they've got the fearless draft again like all the other ones most importantly all these still going to be live patches which i think was one of the big changes people loved for 2024 so that's staying split one it's north and south we know north is the eight teams that they announced that are all lcs south is going to be the cb law teams with some lla sprinkled in there but we've got uh, a double elim top four then we'll go for this start it's the north going to brazil to play in a single single elimination best of three top eight bracket so you're getting basically six best of threes at most with the winner qualifying for a new international tournament which now we know will be first stand we'll get to that later but you could have the lcs choking before the first international event even happens Oh, and I think there's a high probability that we might be into that type of territory we're talking about that when we get to this first end event. Um, uh, disappointed to see that it's best of three. I think that is going to be the one thing that a yeah. lot of people are going to nitpick on and say that if you're going to have this type of thing again with what is on the line that early in the year, you better be giving us the full best of five. You it's better be just the finals. The finals, grand finals is best of five. Everything else in playoffs, best of three. Should have been best of five. Yeah, that that's my criticism for this early part, this early one. I think I think as far as what can happen, what can play out, the best thing for possible is to have kind of some LCS choke job, to have some struggle in this one and have it be that interesting fight between the two different regions that make up the LTA now. And, uh, you know, obviously there's going to be tons of potential for these big upsets. The CB lol, I think you can say, I know people are upset. The LCS effort just had a pretty good MSI, pretty good run at Worlds. Feel like you're on the up and up. It feels like you've screeched on the brakes because now the main competition is going to be against the CB lol and, um, that's going to level up the Brazilian, the Lat Amp scene for sure. And I think there's still, it's not all doom and gloom here for the LCS. I know, especially when you look at the second split and people see best of ones, double round Robin, and, ah, screaming, don't go back to this. But 
I'm not as upset about it because in this three split format, if you want three distinct feeling splits, I think it's okay to have one of them be heavily best of one. I'm, I'm not super happy about it, but I think that I can buy into that type of reasoning for why you might want to see something different, a change of the different formats throughout the year, change it up, variety, these type of things. And still, one of the things that will come through in that split that I think is the important part of this you know, merger and what you can gain from it from the LCS perspective, well, you said it live patch that is still going to be a priority push through for this region and one of the big things that will come through bringing in all the cb lol teams the creativity the play styles that come through with that and the willingness to try and trust in different champions in their knowledge of them of your familiarity of it we just saw the lcs take that to a new level with FlyQuest and the success that they were able to have on the world stage how they're able to challenge teams like a number one seed hanwha life and a gen g from the LCK, that's how you find these type of picks. You you find that trust in your ability to sort through, find the meta, find your own meta, all these things. And I believe that bringing in the CB law, that creativity, that hunger that will be there on a live patch, that's one of the things that you can build in the LCS, the, excuse me, LTA now. Yeah, that, I don't think we'll ever get used to that. We're going to still be caught in LCS for a while. But the big L in that split too is definitely... You know, you go through the best of ones, that's pretty standard. You go through the playoff bracket, winner qualifies for MSI. But because it's separated in this North-South Conference, only one LCS team will be representing at MSI, which feels like a tough punishment for a region that was pretty okay internationally this last year. It's, it's difficult because there's, there's two paths you can take it down. You can take it as just purely this is a, a restructuring, right? This is understanding that this is now our home is made up of two different tenants and you have to keep them both happy and you both got to split out the Halloween candy fairly, all these type of things. And that's going to split down to as well the international appearances and understanding that is a tough one from the LCS perspective because usually... We kind of need both of our representatives. We need as many chances as we can get to have someone find the success, find a, a way to properly represent the fans and the and the and the hopes of the region. Going to be difficult with all based on down to one in this type of situation. I think at the very least, maybe you're saying, okay, we need to step up from CB Lull, CB Lull or LLA teams, and with the new import rules you could theoretically have two lcs players on cb lol team so there's going to be kind of that merger of talent and maybe we'll see uh, whoever's representing from the southern conference actually show up on these international events uh so then we get through msi we come back for split three split two was pretty standard cut and dry and that was just so they could cook something up in this third split this where you're you're picking your opponent afterwards just saying straight up i challenge you guys this concoction screams of maybe maybe the planners had a few too many beers when they were coming up with a split three because this to me seems a little unnecessarily convoluted and confusing i i think they 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 must have used up all the remaining uh bud light lounge type of <laughs> supplies that they had left over all the whatever's to to get to this type of format because yes this is cooking, and the question is, is it dubious food that we have talked so many times and we've seen all sorts of ingredients thrown in to the cooking dish and what has come out of this one is some type of sludge. I feel like we're, we're looking at some sludge from the LCS LTA with this one. Absolutely wild. I think this is going to be a complete game changer compared to any other split in any other region that we have seen. Whether it holds up and provides the competitive integrity that you want to see from the split before the world championship i don't know about that one g yeah and listen i get what they're trying to do they want to have these guys on stage say we want cloud nine give us cloud nine. Oh, ah! and you're developing these rivalries sure 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 but then once you get these top four bottom four you're playing through to an elimination round or you're qualifying for worlds or the top three end of the year bracket the team qualifying for Worlds first is playing a single best of five. One best of five is all you need to win. Sure, you need to win some best of threes, but a single best of five qualifying you for Worlds? Come on. You can't have that. And, and, and that's where I think one of the big things we talk about, 
need to see some changes need to see a willingness to a willingness to listen to the community take that feedback because that is simply not acceptable that will not lead you to sending the strongest best representative nine times out of ten to the event that you're going to for worlds out of this type of situation you're not going to be even close to being prepared and that isn't about really you know about what the talent level what your competition is going to be here just simply being challenged only once in that type of environment compared to what you have to go through in the lpl the lck hell even the lec at this point was very different i cannot accept that one and i think that a lot of the feedback needs to be especially if we're again trying to do our very best at these international events targeted towards that uh, uh part of the format and, and you go deeper than okay one team has already qualified then you're having the top three from the north and south conferences meet in na for 2025 to play that regional championship and it's it's not even double elim it's like a single elim top six bracket where only the top two seeds are kind of getting that extra life that that feels like it's much more you need to qualify for msi than worlds it feels so strange especially with a lot of the changes that we have seen over the course of the last two three years a lot of that understanding of okay you know what this new era, the new way we do things, we understand that having that loser's bracket, it's not a, a cop-out. It's not a, oh, it, it absolutely leads us to having a more competitive tournament, a better one at the end of the day where you get to have these storylines. You get this opportunity to claw yourself back, these type of things that people love to see in their stories of champions. That's what it could be. Not in the LTA at, at this point. So so many questions on how this format's going to work obviously the cross region play is going to be the biggest question mark in how things end up going but i do like that they alternate between playing in na and playing in brazil i think that's going to be some added spice definitely to that first and third split where we're getting and now we know the winners of that first split throw down we know They'll be meeting up in Law Park in Seoul to play some first stand. Five teams are going to be part of this first international event. We know it's going to be six days. It's going to be held March 10th. We already got dates being dropped. And I think we uh, already know it's going to be every team plays a best of three against every other team that's at the event. We know it's going to be fearless. Top four go to a bracket. Best of three semifinals, I'm assuming, and then a best of five finals for kind of a blitz tournament across six days. I, I don't know if everyone else is paying attention in this type of announcement, but I've got major alarm bells just ringing for this event going on, and it's real. I knew, of course, it was going to be a real thing coming through, but it feels real now getting these announcements, getting these concrete details about it, and understanding that, okay, March 10th, well, if it's March 10th, we have to have all these games to decide who's going before this March 10th type of thing. You better be prepared. Buckle your seatbelts, folks. This year is going to start early, and it ain't going to stop for a long time. This is the mega coaster for League of Legends this year around. Yeah, I mean, this is going to be the ultimate burnout test for teams going to all these events because I, I think it was January 25th. They're saying split one. I think the LT was the only one that had an official start date, but that's less than two months and you're already playing that first international event combined with teams from na are gonna have to fly to brazil to play a tournament before they have to go to korea it's not all that insane because i'm pretty sure i've you know if i'm thinking back in the history of things we've started in february in various uh, points and times yeah. of, of whatever issues it's been but to start this early and to get it knowing that you better get yourself into gear because there's an opportunity to go test yourself against the LCK, against the LPL, the LEC, everybody, and see where you stack up, see where you need to improve. What can you learn? All these type of things. All the positives that we talk about these international events and, again, how you can take this stuff back home, what it does for your region, what it does for you, all that. Right out of the gates, right at it this year. Ain't going to be any time to catch a breather for 2025. And we know if this tournament's in March... Then you have to do a whole second split. We know MSI is not going to be in May. I think I've seen July is the tentative date for that, which in turn means Worlds is going to be pushed back probably into 
December heading into this year, which means you're talking about the whole schedule for the year being stretched out and lasting longer. Now you get no breaks now, no escape from the League of Legends. It's going to be all year round. This is going to be the, the new environment to deal with. T1's offseason is about to be two weeks heading into 2025. <laughs> Hey man, it's gonna bring a different, uh, different type of necessity for these teams. Whether you have the full five roster and you're able to withstand the burnout, the test of going through such a, uh, you know, new and long format with what we're gonna be having through all these splits, all these international events. Whether you have to really rely upon having one or two substitutes that you can rep say, okay. We got to get, you know, one, two weeks off here for our guy, bring him in type of thing and have not missing a beat type of situation. All of these things going to play into the minds of things. This is going to be unlike anything we have ever seen before. I'm going to start. You bring in a player who can play all five roles and you just oh. rotate. All right. Today, top laner gets this week off. Jungler gets next week and just move them through the lineup. So everyone gets a little R&R &R in these absolutely insane schedules. Uh, little other announcement, not little, big time. Now we don't know the dates yet, but we know MSI. It's the redemption tour for the semifinals that we as Canadians were denied in 2022. MSI 2025 in Canada. We don't know the cities yet, but let's be honest. It's got to be either Toronto, Vancouver, or Montreal. Yeah, uh, I think as as a, as a biased Canuck over here, Little Maple Syrup, I would say that there's lots of wonderful cities to go through in this country that you could host a great event and have all these amazing teasers and everything else. But yes, to the outside world, very much so. It is down to those three cities. And I think actually it's more so down to the two cities of Toronto and Vancouver is going to be my guess is the two cities where we have already had the LCS visit us and then hold a road show uh, before. Montreal would be quite special and give it a, a different, unique flair to it. But uh, as far as expectation goes, we'll, we'll keep it on these two cities. And yes, thankfully, rightfully restored back to the north, getting ourselves one of these events supposed to have a semifinals at Worlds would have been fantastic. We move past all that. We've got MSI. We will be welcoming the world's best talent to the true white north. Love to see it. 2017 spring. They had the LCS Finals in Vancouver. 2016, they had it in Toronto. Those are the last times there's been a League of Legends uh, live event in I, Canada. I was here, 2016. I was here in Toronto, and it was a banger. The crowd was great. You better believe it'll be there for MSI. Yeah, it was at Scotiabank, then the ACC still, I think, the big arena in Toronto. So, yeah, absolutely uh, going to be delivering some hype. And, yeah, again, Montreal... A lot of gaming and esports uh, stuff building up. Usually MSI, it's just in one location. It doesn't really move around. But maybe because Toronto and Montreal are a little closer. I could see them trying to do a dual city uh, type setup for it. Right, get, get on it early, Mark Z. Get yourself a Via Rail Pass for all you these go. guys. You, you'll figure it out. We'll be crossing the country. No, no problem. $900 per player. That's all they got to <laughs> uh, be spending. But obviously, once dates are all filled out and everything, put... Glad to put some respect on Canada because, listen, I know JoJo Pion just left, but you can talk about the two faces of the LCS, JoJo and the future in Masu, both Canadian. Disguised Toast coming in, Canadian. There's lots of Canadian representation in the LCS. Look, I know our dollar may not be the strongest dollar in the world right now and everything else, but you better believe... All the more reason that... for other people to come in. <laughs> yeah, come have a vacation here. But no, it is, uh, no mistake, an absolute miss on the side of the LCS, how they have not been able to capitalize on being North America, not just America, North America. And now we are the League of the Americas. And what better time than to introduce america to the rest of the americas come on up north come on over for msi have a great time so it should be the ltac the league of the americas plus canada right uh, <laughs> we get a, we can't be we can't be asking for too much of the headline space now come on a little greedy a little greedy but yeah obviously once all the cities are finalized and dates i imagine that probably won't be for a couple months still but just excited to see we know where worlds is going to be we know where msi is we know what this third international event is they're striking while the iron's hot while people are still paying attention before world finals happens to bring out all this news and we're both absolutely here for it uh, next time 
We're here. We'll be breaking down that T1 BLG Finals, how it went. But that is all the time today for League Unlock. Eric and Mark here with you. Beautiful people. Thanks for hanging out. We'll catch you on that flippity flip.